morning, everyone. Welcome to Hope Street Church this morning. It's so great to have you with us in the room. Morning if you're at home online as well. I'm aware we're having a few streaming issues. So if you're picking this up later in the day, thanks for joining us. I'm sorry we didn't get it working for the morning. Um, it seems to be a problem on YouTube's end. But it's great to be with you um, back in the room. If you don't know me um, or haven't met me yet or just forgot who I am because I haven't been here for a few weeks, my name's Luke. I'm part of the team here at Hope Street. And I hope your days have started well. I'm sure they would have started better than mine when I came out of my bedroom this morning and said, I was greeted by my six-year-old who turned to me and said, Daddy, why are you wearing a cardigan? Cardigans are for girls. So I've been, you know, I've been re-evaluating my life choices ever since that moment. Um, but it's great to have you with us. And um, we're kicking off a new series this morning um, called An Ordinary People, Extraordinary God. We're going to be charting our way through the book of Acts, looking at some ordinary people and the extraordinary things they do through God. Andy's going to be speaking for us. Sadly, Rachel uh, tested positive earlier in the week, so Andy and Rachel are isolating today. So you'll have to forgive us if we're slightly thin on the ground team-wise. I'm going to be jumping around on piano, leading bits here. But we trust that God is still good, and we can still worship him together. Just a reminder, we're currently kind of in the season of slightly less restrictions, but uh, while we're in here, while we're singing, we do still need to wear masks at all times. When we head down to the cafe, have drinks together, we can take them off while we're eating and drinking. But when we're worshipping together, when we're in church, we do have to keep masks on, I'm afraid. If you're exempt, that's also fine. But why don't we stand together? We're going to worship God uh, this morning together. I'm going to read from Psalm 100. 126. It says, When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Lord Jesus, I thank you that we can come together this morning and remember the great things that you have done for us, the great things you've worked in our lives. And we pray that as a response, our mouths will be filled with joy. Our, so our tongues will be filled with songs of your praises. Amen. Let's sing together with Ryan. I'm confident and covered 
blasphemy Love's like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath The weight of his wind and mercy And all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory And I realize just how beautiful you are And how good your affections are for me And oh, how he loves us so His portion and He is our prize Drawn to redemption by grace In His Arctic grace is an ocean We're all sinking So heaven meets up like an open sea My heart stands violently inside of my chest I don't have time to make these regrets when I think about the way He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. How He loves us. praying as a team just beforehand that this morning for someone it feels like they're opening a book and just turning a new page and that stepping into this room today feels like a new chapter and they want to declare a new phase of their life a new page being turned in their life this morning and I feel like that song is a is an echo of that prayer is that at the start of this page turn for you it's a reminder that God loves you a reminder that no matter what you've done no matter what's happened in the previous page When you turn that page, God loves you and he wants to declare that over you this morning, that God loves you. Ryan's going to sing it again. And if that's you this morning wanting to turn that page, I encourage you just to ask him to help you turn it. Ask the Lord to to come and, and help you turn that page. Receive his love this morning. Receive his spirit this morning. As as Ryan sings that chorus again, just receive God's love for you this morning. Jesus, I thank you that you love us. Thank you that you want to declare your love over us this morning. 
thank you that you're here with us and you're meeting with us already. As we turn our eyes to you in prayer now, Lord, would you continue to meet with us? Would you continue to fill us with your spirit? Continue to pour your love out into us this morning, Lord. We want to turn our eyes outwards and pray for our world, for our country. And we start, Lord, by remembering today as the the Queen celebrates her jubilee. We want to lift her before you this morning and thank you for her. Thank you for her leadership. Thank you for the way in which she reigns over this country and this nation. And we just pray your blessing over her. We pray your protection over her, Lord. We pray she would continue to lead us in a, in a godly way. We pray for all of the leaders of our country, Lord, for the government, for the ministers, Lord. We pray your blessing over them this morning as well. We pray your protection over them. We pray you'd raise up leaders who are of you to lead this nation in a godly way, that they would seek your wisdom, they would seek your purposes, they would seek your will, that through them we would see the biblical call to end injustice, to end suffering. We pray that through our leaders we would see strongholds in this country broken, that we'd see leaders alive for you, seeking your purposes in their life. We pray for ourselves as well. Why don't we just hold our hands over our hearts this morning? We pray that we would remember your purposes for us. We pray that whilst we're here, we'd be filled up with your spirit and sent out into the world, ready to live and breathe for you. Ready to fill Wrexham, fill the high street, fill our homes, fill our neighborhoods with your love. We pray you'd raise us to be pillars and beacons of your love to those around us. So Lord, we pray you continue to meet with us this morning. Continue to fill us with your spirit. We ask all these things in your great name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Ryan. Grab a seat, please. Um, It's so great to have you with us this morning. If you missed the start, joined us slightly late. My name's Luke. I'm part of the team here at Hope Street. And I've got some exciting news to report straight off the back of our worship. I know know we're not really allowed to talk about sport today. It wasn't a great day for any of the nations yesterday. But it was an incredible day for Hope Street sport. The Hope Street uh, team went up to Liverpool. um, We took a football team up from Bridge the Gap. And I can successfully report we came back victorious. Kyle and the boys... Oh, malevolently, that's not a big deal, Carl. Sorry. I thought, you might, I thought you might get a little bit of a cheer. We came back victorious. There we go. There we go. Um, yeah, if you want to know more about it, chat to Kyle, chat to Ryan. I think he was there. And if you want to come along and join us, we play football on a Wednesday night. Bridge the gap. It's uh, an opportunity for men of any age to come and just hang out on a Wednesday night, build community together, bring some friends along. The whole point of it is it's not a church football team. There was probably two or three guys from church there yesterday. So saying it's a Hope Street victory, maybe slightly, slightly disingenuous, but there were some guys from Hope Street there, and one of them scored, so it counts. Um, yeah, if you're new this morning, it's great uh, for you to join us. And there's a number of ways that you can kind of get involved with, with life at Hope Street. First of all, by just coming along. And you're here already, so you're doing that right. A um, number of different opportunities to get involved as well. You can pray with us on a Tuesday morning. You can join a team at Hope Street as well. There's plenty of teams to join. All of the details for that are on our website hopestreet.church. Do uh, get in touch. There's also a newcomer's meal coming up as well. If you've joined the church in the past few months, Andy and Rachel, the the pastors here, would love to invite you around to theirs just to share a bit more about the vision of Hope Street, share more about how you can get involved and have a meal together. Details of that are on our website. Uh, It's coming up later this month. So if you haven't already signed up for that and would like to, please do sign up. Secondly, Alpha kicked off on Tuesday night. We had a great time. Sadly, I wasn't able to be there because I was still isolating. But from what I've heard back, um, an amazing number turned up and um, had a great meal together, watched a film together, and had a great discussion together as well. And it's not too late for you to join or for you to invite friends. Week two of Alpha is by far the best week to come. Um, The awkwardness of week one's out of the way, and week two, you can dive straight in and get into great conversations. It's 7.30 this Tuesday. If you want to join us, please bring a friend along. Please invite someone you know who doesn't come to church to join us on a Tuesday and, and find out what faith and life is really all about. It's a great place to ask big questions. No question's too big. No question is too small. So please, Tuesday night, 7.30, invite your friends along. We'd love to see you there. The final one from me is just sort of one date for your diary to get excited about. Back in November time, 
the, um, we hosted a little bonfire night down at the farm and we had an amazing time. It was a phenomenal evening of fireworks, of hot chocolates, of, of drinks and marshmallows and an opportunity for a, not people who aren't part of our congregation to come and join us for fun. And on Friday, the 4th of March, we're doing something similar. Downstairs here, we're going to host a bingo night. Um, for those of you who don't know, this building, this building used to be a Burton store. Uh, years and years ago, Burton sold it, and it went into kind of disrepair. And it was a number of different things before we planted a church into it. One of the things was a roller disco. I'm working on that one. We're going to get a roller disco at some point. But one of the other things it was was a bingo hall. And downstairs, I think I might have even been up here, there used to be a booth, um, Regent Bingo. And we've got the original booth downstairs. I'm working on refurbishing it, getting some new lights in. And we're going to host a bingo night downstairs, the 4th of March. More details will come on our social media and an email soon. But save the date and get thinking about who you can invite. We'd love to see downstairs full of people shouting the relevant bingo terms. Um, <laughs> As you can tell, I've been to plenty of bingo nights. Um, but yeah, that's just a little date for your diaries for you. Um, save it, get thinking about it, and there'll be more details soon. In a few moments, as I said before, Andy can't be with us this morning, but he's pre-recorded a message for us. He's going to share, kicking off our new series, Ordinary People, Extraordinary God, looking through the book of Acts. But first of all, we're just going to have a short break. This is an opportunity for those of you who are regulars at church to give. I know many of you give in different ways to the life of the church. But if you do want to give today, then this information is going to come up on the screen. But why don't you use this opportunity as well for a couple of minutes just to turn to those around you, say hi, ask them a friendly question, what have they got cooking for dinner, something like that. And um, we'll be back in a few minutes. Great, if I could encourage you to draw those conversations to a close. Um, as I said, Andy's going to share uh, with us in this new series, but before he does, Grant is going to come and just read from the Bible for us. So Grant, take it away, and then Andy will magically appear. Okay, so I'm reading from Acts 3, verses uh, 1 to 12. So one day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gates called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. 
Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? Well, hello. I'm sorry we can't be with you today. Um, COVID has hit our household. Uh, Rachel's unfortunately got COVID, uh, but uh, she's doing fine and we hope to be back with you next week. Um, But I'm sorry we can't be there this morning. Today we are starting a a new series looking at the book of Acts in the Bible uh, uh, called Ordinary People extraordinary God and uh, we're going to be looking at some of the key figures in the early church who as well as telling the story of how the church began uh, also act as examples to us of the difference that Jesus makes in our lives how he takes us and transforms us how he uses us for his purposes and as you will know I'm sure is it uh, like Luke uh, wrote the book of Acts uh, the 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 gospel writer Luke so it is almost like a part two of Luke's gospel a sequel if you would like and uh, uh, and we read just then from uh, chapter 3 verses 1 to 12 and today we're going to look at this character of Peter Simon Peter uh, and uh, and the first part of the talk today I want to call Jesus chooses ordinary people You know, the idea of being a disciple uh, was not unique to followers of Jesus at that time. It was a concept that was familiar to both people from like a Jewish background and also from the wider kind of Greek culture. Uh, And it described uh, apprentices uh, and it could be used, you could be a disciple of a particular vocation or a religious scholar or perhaps of a philosophy like Plato or Socrates, or, or it could be that you're a disciple of a political cause. Uh, and even the followers of John the Baptist, um, which included Jesus himself and uh, Andrew, Peter's brother, were also called John's disciples. But one thing that seems unique to Jesus's brand of being a disciple is that he called people to come and follow him. He chose them. You know, the the Gospels talk about the the teachers of the law remarking when Jesus um, spoke in the temple that he spoke uh, as uh, as one with authority. And it's that authority that that he spoke with when he said, come follow me. And people turned their lives upside down, left all they had to respond to that call. You know, he's almost saying, you may think that this is the way your life is going to be, but I have a different reality for you. And that was the case with Simon, Simon Peter. Uh, He was a brother and business partner of Andrew, uh, one of the other disciples, and they were in the family fishing business. They were also associates of James and John, who were also two of Jesus' disciples. But uh, like Simon was unschooled. He was uh, he was a married man. And and it is John one of his friends who tells us in the Gospel of John chapter 1 that Simon was first taken to see Jesus by his brother Andrew. He was kind of dragged along and as he is introduced to Jesus, um, Jesus says to him in John chapter 1, you are Simon but you will be called Cephas, uh, which is translated Peter and that word means rock. Jesus spoke words of life, words of calling over Simon at the first moment that he met him. And this is what Jesus does. He chooses us. He speaks to our potential, our calling. And so Jesus befriends this group of brothers and friends 
And Peter probably joined his brother and his friends in going with Jesus to the wedding in Cana, which we're told about, where Jesus turns water into wine. And you can imagine that was them having a pretty good time at that place. And then Jesus went out with the four of them uh, fishing overnight. And all the while this is going on, you can hear in Peter's head, there's been some mistake. I don't belong here with this group. You know, perhaps Peter has never really seen himself as someone interested in God. Or perhaps he's already been wrestling in, in his life with an inner call from the voice of God and just thinking, my life doesn't measure up to this. Whatever it is, he seems to be painfully aware of his own shortcomings. And when there's this miraculous catch of fish, he says in Luke 5, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. He falls at Jesus' feet. And you know, this word sinful is the same word that's used elsewhere to describe the tax collectors and the sinners. Peter sees himself in this group that is beyond the kind of the, the realms of, of those uh, who, who would be part of the insiders to the, to the things of God. He sees himself as an outsider, disqualified. Yeah, and this word sinful, it, it sort of suggests that, that he's surrounded by his mistakes, his failures. He can't escape them. And whether that's something that's been spoken, that he's spoken over himself, or whether it's something that's been spoken over him by others, it seems like it's an identity he carries. He says, go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. But this moment is the moment of release for Peter. With Jesus, there is no rejection. Jesus says, don't be afraid. From now on, you go, you're going to fish for people. And it's the beginning of a transformation of Peter's identity. He's saying you don't need to fear that your past will define your, feet, your future. You know, perhaps like Peter, you have this inner wrestle with your own shortcomings. Perhaps you have heard the voice of God in the past with a sense of calling and it hasn't and, it, and those dreams haven't come to reality yet. You might be thinking, how could I ever be used by God? But God wants to say to you today, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient for you. Don't be afraid. From now on, you're going to fish for people. And you know, in the Gospels from that point, it's often Peter's perspective, his words that are provided as an example of the kind of ups and downs of the journey of the disciples. From him confessing that Jesus is the son of God to not realising that means that he's going to have to he's going to have to die to then uh, Peter's uh, like not uh, P Peter's betrayal of Jesus to then him being forgiven. And, and Jesus saying that on this rock, I'm going to build my church. All of this is to say that Jesus chooses ordinary people. By his extraordinary grace and power, he calls ordinary people in his church to do extraordinary things. And if you're listening to this today and you're thinking of something from your past that disqualifies you, perhaps you think you're not educated enough, religious enough, don't look a particular way. You're too old or too young. Know that Jesus, you know, he could have chosen anyone in the whole world and he chose Peter on whom to build his church. This ordinary man, you know, he wasn't even the most religious in his family. Jesus looks differently at the things than, 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 the, than the world does at us. He doesn't value the same things that the world does. Life and the kingdom of God is about people. Look around you now. You might be at home and you might be looking at others on your sofa, those in your family, those in your household. You might be at church looking at those that God has called to Hope Street. God is capable of doing extraordinary things 
with the people he has gathered to us at Hope Street, right here, right now, in our time. You know, God is calling us to honour each other by seeing the humanity in one another, the amazing capability of God using ordinary people to do extraordinary things. So firstly, Jesus chooses ordinary, even unlikely people. And secondly, Jesus shares his authority with ordinary people. At the end of the gospel story, Jesus is crucified and the, dis- dis- and the disciples scatter afraid. And, it- and everything looks pretty bleak. But, you know, then the power of the resurrection is unleashed and the spirit poured out at Pentecost. And suddenly these previously timid disciples are fearlessly sent out. The power of the Holy Spirit in us um, means that we can share in with the power and the authority of Jesus. And now just as Jesus called out Simon and spoke words of life over him and chose him, Peter addresses and calls out this lame man. You know, this man has probably been carried by friends to the gate of the temple to sit there begging while people come in to pray. And earlier in Acts, it says that the disciples met together each day in the temple courts. So it's quite possible that this isn't the first time that they've passed this man lying there. But this time, Jesus, ta- this time, Peter, sorry, takes the initiative. You know, Matthew 28, Jesus uh, is about to go into heaven and he gives what is called the Great Commission. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. In other words, I'm giving you my authority to do what I have done, to go and make disciples, to go to people and speak words of life over them. This is Peter walking in that authority. So firstly, Peter sees, he looks intently at the man. You know, sometimes Jesus breaking into a particular situation in our lives and and us being used by him to bring life to this world requires us to stop looking away, but study someone and 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 fix our gaze on them. Try not to freak them out. (laughs) But in that moment, allowing faith and the possibility that God wants to move in and work. Uh, to, to, to be given time to rise up in us, allowing Jesus' compassion to move us for somebody, to truly see them. You know, it's always compassion and love that is the motivation for Jesus' healing. And then secondly, Peter gets the man's attention. He's almost saying, I want you to see that I see you. And then thirdly, he steps out in authority. Peter changes the subject. He changes the conversation. He says, I don't have riches like I can't give you money. But here's what I do have in me. Jesus, Jesus, authority to heal. And sometimes, you know, we can feel like we're being asked for stuff from the world, but it's But what we truly have to give is Jesus. That's what's of ultimate value. No one is going to ask you to pray for them outside of the walls of this church. You know, you have to take the initiative. People don't realise that there's a different future available to them. But somebody needs to tell them that. It requires us to go and take the initiative, to change the conversation, to open up a different possibility, a new reality to people. And then Peter prays with authority. And when it comes to healing, um, Jesus' model is to speak to the condition with authority. You know, he says to blind eyes, be opened. He says to people who can't walk, get up. Now, he offers us that authority to do those things in his, in what's called his name, under his authority. So when, when we pray, we can speak to a condition and say, be healed in Jesus' name. 
might be, I speak to this ankle, be healed in Jesus' name. And then when we pray, it's a good idea to test it. You know, it's in that moment in this encounter that that's where the moment of, of, of healing occurred, the miracle occurred. As the man stands up, you know, I don't necessarily always know that that's, that's the best model to try and haul somebody up when we've prayed for them. But it is a really good thing to ask people to test it because it can often be in the moment of testing that the, that the miracle happens. Do, uh, you know, do, get, do people get healed every time we pray for them? No. And, you know, sometimes that can be painful and we need to give people an explanation of that. You know, over my life, the frequency of healings that I've seen tends to ebb and flow. Um, And healing is just a sign. It's not something that happens every single time. It's a sign of the coming kingdom. Jesus said that the kingdom was here now, but the kingdom was also in the future. It's like here in part. What we see of the kingdom breaking in, of heaven breaking out in this life is just a foretaste. Um, It's just in part. You know, we're all going to die eventually, so healing is just temporary. At our table on Thursday, we were looking at this passage and we prayed over Zoom because we were isolating um, at, the, at the end and, and for, for a few of the conditions that people had on the call. And, and it seemed like there was a measure of healing in the moment, but then people said that the pain had returned the next day. And, you know, I am longing that we would have a season of greater power, that we would see God move in greater ways. And let's be praying for that. Can I encourage you to press into prayer for these things? What I am convinced of, though, is that these signs and wonders are for out there as much as they are for in here, if I was in the church today. You know, people who don't yet know the love of Jesus. Signs and wonders are signs that make people wonder. And so in this moment, when people see this man healed, this man that they've seen um, lame and begging each day on the way into the temple, they're amazed and they come running to Peter and John. And so finally, Peter explains what has happened. You know, we need to be able to give an explanation for the healings that we see or for for the way that God works miraculously. This is not by our power, Peter says, but it's by the hands of Jesus of Nazareth and then goes on to explain the gospel. You know, it can be that people see God's work on the outside and we want to give them the opportunity to experience the healing work of God on the inside, the saving work of God on the inside. So whenever we pray for somebody, let's be ready to give an explanation for what they see. Salvation is the greatest miracle. And when we hear stories like this one of Peter, it's easy, it's easy to super spiritualize people like Peter. But when you look at the accounts of his life, it's clear that he is just an ordinary man working out this relationship with Jesus. And Jesus works in him to do extraordinary things. But the extraordinary one is God himself. You know, I want to say today that there are no good old days. Jesus is the same today as he's always been. He's able to use his church in the same way he's always been able to. He wants to use you and me. So I want to encourage us today as we look around at this kind of fledgling group of people that we have at Hope Street. Let's honour one another by believing that God can do extraordinary things through this group of people. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to respond to what God wants to do in the room today. Um, yeah, why don't, we, why don't we stand as we do that off the back of what Andy shared. Let's just wait for the Spirit to come for a few minutes. It might feel a bit awkward for some if you've never done this before, but we believe the Spirit wants to move and wants to speak to us and continue to speak to us through what Andy said. So let's just wait. We're going to be quiet and then Ryan in a few minutes is going to...
going to play in the background as well. But let's just, you could do that just by holding out, holding out your hands as a, a simple way just to say we're ready to receive what God has for us today. Now let's just wait for him to come. We, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Jesus, come Holy Spirit, come and fill us up, Lord. And we wait for you now, Lord. We pray you would come and fill each of us afresh, Lord. Where we're feeling, like Andy said, where we're feeling disqualified, where we're feeling discounted, where we're feeling, well, ordinary, Lord, come and, and remind us of your presence. Remind us of your goodness, Lord. Mm, oh, Jesus. Which I think, I think there's a couple of things that God wants to do in the room that we can pray for um, in a few moments. But the, the first is, just as Andy was, was kind of sharing that, that that was really resonating in, in a few of you this morning, that there's that feeling of disqualification, the feeling of dissatisfaction with what, what your life has turned out to be. And it's feeling like you're not able to step into that full promise, that full purpose that God has for you, because you're looking at what's been behind you and remembering the past and not looking at God and focusing on what he has for you. And God wants to say to you this morning, that's not the case that we, we heard in Andy's talk that God uses the ordinary, God uses the broken, God uses the unlikely, God uses those with broken pasts to do mighty things in his name. And he wants to speak that over you this morning. If that's you, in a moment we're gonna worship and I'd encourage you to come to the front and we'd love to pray for you. We'd love to pray God's blessing over you this morning. But Andy also talked about prayer for healing. And we believe here that God does heal. God is, a, is on the move and he uses his spirit to heal. And if that's you this morning, I, particularly I've just felt like a twinge in my, my kind of back, lower right back. If that's, if that's you with a lower right back problem this morning, then come forward as well. We'd love to pray for you. Or if there's anything you've come this morning with a, a complaint or a a problem we'd love to we'd love to see God heal that this morning so come forward for prayer if that's you so if you're feeling disqualified this morning if you're looking back at your past and wondering how on earth God could do anything in your life come forward as well we would love to pray for you. it's a bold step it's a big thing to do but God rewards those who take big steps in faith we're going to worship Ryan's going to lead us in a couple of songs come forward and members of the team will be around to pray if, if that's you. Don't miss this opportunity this morning to, to leave without being prayed for. So let's worship, let's pray together.
Ryan's been singing that. I just sense that in that line, oh, God, I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed. There's maybe someone, a few people here today looking at their week ahead thinking, oh, I would love more of that, more of that feeling that whatever's coming at me this week, I can't deal with. I'm completely overwhelmed by my circumstances, by my work, by, by whatever's happening in my life. And I would love more of God's vision to not be overwhelmed. If, as Ryan carries on playing, if that's you, come forward. If you don't feel comfortable coming forward, just... Let me pray for you now, Lord. Would, if that's someone here this morning, Lord, would you fill them with your spirit to know that whatever they are facing, they will be able to trust in you fully and will not be overwhelmed by their circumstances, not be overwhelmed by the life that they're leading, Lord, but they can trust fully in you. Come, Jesus. Let's continue to worship together and do come forward if that word was particularly for you.
We're going to softly close our gathering there for this morning. The, Ryan's going to carry on worshipping here. If you're still receiving, then carry on doing so. If you've got kids downstairs, now's probably a good time to go and grab those. But um, don't leave this place without being prayed for. If, if you want prayer for something this morning, come forward, grab someone near you and ask them to pray with you. Um, but let me just pray God's blessing over us as, as we go. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the way in which you meet with us. Thank you that you're good and you're kind. And we pray your blessing over everyone here this morning. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be on us all and remain with us always. Amen. Have a great week. Ryan's going to continue to worship here. But if you want to carry on worshiping, please feel free. But if not, head down, grab a drink, grab a croissant. It'd be great to meet you if you're new this morning. Come and say hi. Thanks so much. Darkness seems to hide his face. I'd rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor. Christ of